one other industry, it just occurred to me, is the home service industry, the specialty home service. I mean, they may be dirty businesses, maybe, but they're the kind of recession resistant businesses that people seem to really go after. You know, houses are going to get flooded. There's going to be mold and mildew. They, I mean, I want a new bathroom. And people who can do that more efficiently and, and effectively, if they have the system, you're looking for companies sometimes that have the gray hair on young shoulders, Tara. The companies that know what they're doing, and maybe they see an industry and they're just like, you know, maybe it's not incredibly sexy. It just works. I was working with a candidate a few months ago. I told you this story, and we were doing his consultation. We were finding out what he was passionate about, how he wanted to live, work, and play as he transitioned out of corporate and looked at owning his own franchise. And I said, how do you feel about blue-collar employees versus white-collar employees? Have you ever thought about that? And he said, no, no one's ever asked me that question. He said, but I'm okay with both. He said, I think I would actually lean a little towards blue collar. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, the dirtier the business, the higher the barrier to entry. And mm -hmm. I said, that's an excellent point. There are a lot of people that just don't want a dirty business and that's fine, but you're right. There are barriers to entry for every business that you look at. And so that's a great point. I went through our inventory and I was able to show him eight dirty businesses. And it was just a really fun call. We had a blast because as the business got dirtier, he got more excited about it. <laughs> he got really turned on to pet waste management. He re got really turned on to crime scene cleanup. Some oh things that people would never think about as a franchise, right? Everybody's exposure to franchising is food, right? That's the 800 pound gorilla in our marketplace. Terry, we just lost half our people right there. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it, some of those dirty businesses, here's something that a lot of my people have noticed as they investigate and see what's out there for them. One of the things that they notice is that some of these businesses are not as labor intensive as they think. A lot right. of times it's, it's equipment intensive. And that's kind of an interesting aspect that you wouldn't realize. You might look at it and say, boy, that's going to be a lot of labor. And some of them are. Some of the dirty businesses are labor intensive. But there's a lot of those dirty businesses that are really equipment intensive, which is another barrier to entry and the better equipment you have. I mean, we saw a new company coming in with the gray hair. They've been in the industries for a while, but they're now starting something. They think they have a better mousetrap. They're doing, you know, variations of residential and commercial power washing. I mean, there you go, right? It's equipment oh. intensive too. Yeah, I was thinking as I was sitting there listening to their presentation, do I know of a national power washing company? Is there a brand out there that dominates the power washing space? And I couldn't think of one. I have not found one since I left Memphis and got back to my office. But that's the goal of this founder, of his executive team, which is impressive, of his operations team, which is impressive, is to become the national U.S. brand in power washing. Wow. Okay. Blue collar labor, but you don't need a lot of labor, right? They have best equipment in the industry. And they made the point that a lot of businesses are required to power wash. And I'm yeah. like, a requirement. Okay. I know that kitchens are required to clean their grease out of their grills and out of their exhaust systems on a regular basis. So you don't have fires, right? But I hadn't thought of the fact that those parking lots for restaurants need to be power washed. And now my reticular activation system is turned on. When I drive by our fast food restaurants in my area where I live, I see it every morning. They're power washing, right? They're cleaning up the spilled ketchup. They're cleaning up the ice cream cone that your four-year-old tossed out the window, right? Yeah. Those are requirements. And also think about all this takes us to another business in that kind of ugly field, but just what about all those businesses that are out there that are making the parking lot, not just cleaning it, but then striping it. Striping it. Yeah. What I a mean, great B2B business. Business B2B, to business. It's also all the, think about all the condos and apartment complexes and 
property I, management companies, shopping oh centers, strip centers. Again, equipment intensive, kind of an ugly business if you don't know what you're looking at. You think it's labor intensive. Again, maybe it's labor intensive if you're counting your equipment as part of the labor.